Okay, lesson 104 is over semicircles, arcs, and sectors. All right, so if you look at the bottom of page 647, it says a semicircle is half of a circle. Thus, the length of a semicircle is half the circumference of a whole circle. The area enclosed by a semicircle and its diameter is half the area of a full circle. We will practice finding the lengths of semicircles and the areas they enclose by calculating the perimeters and areas of figures that contain semicircles, like we have here. We will also find the lengths of arcs and areas of sectors that are not semicircles. All right, so we're working with parts of circles. You guys have been finding the perimeters, the circumferences of circles, pi times diameter. You've been finding the area, pi r squared. So now we're doing the same thing, but we're only trying to figure out part of a circle. Okay, so this is kind of poorly drawn, but when you have half of a circle, that's called a semicircle, a circle cut in half. So to find the perimeter of this outside edge, you would have to find the circumference of the whole circle divided by two. To find the area of this half circle, this semicircle, you would have to find the area of the circle, pi r squared, divide that by two. This question says, find the perimeter of this figure. Dimensions are in meters. Okay, so when we're talking about perimeter, we're talking about the entire outer edge. Okay, so everything on the outside here. We don't need this line inside. We're only concerned with the outer edge. Okay, so we know this is four. So this has to be four. Okay, this side here is not given, but if you come over here, the radius of this circle is well, this semicircle is 5. So the diameter would have to be 10. So we can infer that this side is also 10. All right, so we have 3 out of 4 measurements. We have 4, 4, and 10. Now all we need to get the rest of the perimeter is this part of our semicircle. Okay, so we're trying to figure out half of the circumference. So you have to remember your formula for circumference, right? Pi times diameter. Now this one's half of a semicircle. So this is gonna be pi times diameter divided by two. It's important that you write your formula first. On your test, I'll give you credit if I see this formula, but it also helps you to work the problem more efficiently. Okay, so we're gonna do 3.14 for pi. The diameter is five, radius is 10, but the diameter, um, no, sorry, the diameter is 10, the radius is five. So your diameter here should be 10. And then that's going to be divided by 2. Okay, now 2 will go into 3.14. 1.57 times. If you can remember that, it'll just save you so much time down the road. Remember that half of pi is 1.57. Okay, 1.57 times 10. Okay, all we need to do is move our decimal over. So that's going to be 15.7. Okay, so our four sides are 4, 4, 10, and then this curve is 15.7. So to find the perimeter, we just have to add those up. 4, 4, 10, 15.7, making sure we are aligning our numbers properly. Okay, so we have 0.7. 4 plus 4 is 8, plus 5 be 13, and 3. All right, so we get 33.7 meters for our perimeter. Example two says find the area of this figure. Dimensions are in meters. Okay, so for the area, we have two portions here. We need to find the area of these two separately and then add them together. Okay, so first let's find the area of this rectangular portion. Okay, well that's pretty easy. Four times 10, it's gonna be 40. Then we need to find the area of our semicircle. Okay, so hopefully you remember the formula for the area of a circle, pi, r squared, and we're going to have to divide this by 2 since we have half of a circle. Okay, so we've got 3.14 and 5, which is our radius squared, would be 25. 5 times 5 would be 25 divided by 2. We know 2 will go into 3.14, 1.57. So now we need to do 1.57 times 25. So 1.57 times 25. 5 times 7 is 35. 5 times 5 is 25 plus 3, that would be 28. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 2 is 7. 
2 times 7 is 14. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 is 11. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. 5, 12, 9, 3. Bring your decimal over. 39.25. So we need to add that to our 40. So we're adding our rectangle and our semicircle. And we get 79 25 hundredths meters for our area. All right, so you know your formulas, write your formulas, and then just plug the numbers in and make sure you're adding everything up that you need to be adding up. Okay, look at example three. It says find the area of the shaded sector of this circle. Okay, so again, kind of poorly drawn, but it'll be okay. We come over to this circular looking shape. All right, now, this is not a semicircle, it's um, a sector of a circle. All right, but we can figure out the area of this pretty easily, okay? Um, you can see that the portion that is not shaded is coming out to 300 degrees. So then the angle of the portion that is shaded will be how many degrees? Well, we know there's 360 degrees in a circle. 300 of those degrees are not shaded. So this must be a 60 degree arc here, or um, sector. Okay, so the angle is 60 degrees, this arc is 60 degrees. Okay, so 60 degrees out of 360 degrees is one sixth. So one sixth of this circle is shaded. So all we have to do to figure out the area of this sector um, is to do pi r squared divided by six because pi r squared gets us the area of the whole circle. But then we have to divide by six because we're only dealing with one sixth of the circle. So we're gonna do pi r squared to get the area of the circle. Then we'll have to divide that by six because we're only using one sixth here that's shaded. Okay, so we've got um, 3.14 for pi. Radius squared, well the radius is six, so six squared would be 36 and then we're dividing that by six. So we have six going into 36 six times. So all we have to do is 3.14 times six. Okay, and we'll get 18.84 um, centimeters squared. Oh yeah, that should have been centimeter or meter squared up here too. All right, so for ones like this, where you have a just a sector, and you have to figure out what fraction of the circle you're dealing with, in this case, one sixth, okay? So an extra step in there. All right, if you look at the bottom of page um, 649, okay? It says, as we have discussed in investigation two, an arc is part of the circumference of a circle. In the following figure, we could refer to arc AB, which is written like this. Okay, AB from A to B, that would be an arc. Just a part of a curve, just a curve of the circle, not the whole circle, a part. Actually, there are two arcs named AB in this figure. Can you find both of them? We have this one here, but then we also have this one. We can go A to B here, but we can also go A to B there, okay? The arc from A clockwise to B is called a minor arc because it is less than a semicircle, all right? From here to here, that's less than half. So it's an arc and we call it a minor arc. The arc from A counterclockwise to B is called a major arc because it is greater than a semicircle. From here all the way to here is definitely more than half. So this AB is a major arc. Major arcs are sometimes named with three letters. Major arc AB may be named arc ACB. We can measure the amount of curve in an arc in degrees. The number of degrees in an arc is equal to the measure of the central angle of the arc. Okay, if minor arc AB in the figure above measures 120 degrees, so from here to here, if that measures 120 degrees, then the measure of major arc AB, so from here to here, is 240 degrees, because the sum of the measures of the major arc 
and minor arc is 360. Okay, so parts of a circle using things you guys have already been learning. All right, look at example four. In this figure, central angle AOC measures 70 degrees. Okay, so this angle here measures 70 degrees. How many degrees is the measure of major arc AC? Okay, so again, there are two arcs. There's minor arc, and then there's the major arc. Now, if this central angle is 70 degrees, then this arc is 70 degrees as well. Okay, that's just a rule. All right, so if they want the, the length of major arc AC, well, we know there's 360 degrees in a circle, so all we have to do is subtract 70 degrees. What am I doing? Okay, 360 minus 70, zero. Okay, so seven from 16, that's nine. Okay, so 290 degrees for the major arc. All right, look at example five. A minor arc with a radius, okay, this is a really poorly drawn minor arc, but it'll work. A minor arc with a radius of two and centered at the origin is drawn from the positive x axis to the positive y axis. What is the length of the arc? All right, well, just imagine if this were a complete circle, okay? If we were trying to find the circumference of the complete circle, we would do pi times diameter, so 3.14, and the diameter if this were a complete circle would be one, two, three, four. So 3.14 times four, but we only have this much of the circle. So we have one out of two, three, four. So we only have one fourth of the circle or 90 degrees out of 360 degrees. So we can just figure out the circumference and then divide it by four. So we'll do pi times diameter divided by four. Now, if you set it up this way, which you should, then you can automatically see that, oh, I just canceled these out and your answer is really easy, 3.14. Okay, 3.14 units. We don't know our measurements, so we're just gonna put units. All right, so again, this time we had one fourth of a circle and we're trying to find the length of this. So we just do pi times diameter divided by four. All right, go ahead and do the practice problems on your own, A, B, C, D, and then play the video and um, I'll give you the answers and you can see if you got them correct. Okay, for A, for the perimeter, you should have gotten 29.42 centimeters. For B, 44.13 centimeters squared. For C, two pi centimeters squared. And for D, 11.14 centimeters. All right, so if you got those, awesome. If you didn't, I'm gonna go ahead and work them so you can maybe see what the problem is. All right, so A, find the perimeter of this figure and use 3.14 for pi. All right, so we need to get all our sides. So this one's four. Okay, so we can put a four over here. We already know the length of that. Okay, we also need this side. That's gonna be three. This side over here then will also be three. This side. Well, if this radius is three, then this diameter is six plus four. So this will be 10. Okay, and then we just need the length of this semicircle. Okay, so we have to do pi times diameter divided by two because it's a semicircle. So we'll do 3.14 times our diameter of six divided by two. Okay, so two will go in there 1.57 times. So then we just do 1.57 times six We get 9.42. So we can just add that here. Should have all our sides. Four plus uh, six is 10 plus nine is 19. So 29.42, which is correct. Okay, for the area. Okay, well, first we're just gonna do the rectangle. So three times 10, easy, 30. Then we need to do pi r squared divided by two. So write your formula, pi r squared divided by two. Okay, uh, I'm gonna come over here. 3.14 times 
times the radius squared, your radius is 3, so 9. 3 squared is 9, divided by 2. 1.57, okay? 1.57 times 9 Okay, so 14.13, so we get 44 13 hundredths centimeters squared, which is correct. Okay, for C, find the area of this 45 degree sector. Leave pi as pi. Okay, well, first of all, what portion of a circle are we working with? 45 degrees, that's what fraction of 360? Mm. Mm, let's see here, we can divide both by 5. Five will go in there nine times. 360 divided by five. Okay, 72. That'll reduce to one eighth. Okay, so we're dealing with one eighth of a circle. So to find the area of this, all we have to do is pi r squared divided by eight. It says leave pi as pi. Okay, so r squared, that's four. So pi times r squared would be pi times 16, and we're still dividing by eight. So eight will go in there twice. So you get two pi centimeters squared. All right, then finally D, find the perimeter of the figure in problem C. Include the arc and two segments, use 3.14 for pi. Okay, so same one, 45 degrees, so we're still dealing with 1 eighth. A little different though, this is a four centimeter radius, so this radius will also be four centimeters. So we have two of our sides, we have this one, and this one, then we just need this one here. All right, so this time we're gonna do pi times diameter and divide that by eight. We have one eighth of the circumference. Okay, so we're gonna use 3.14 times our diameter of eight. The radius is four, the diameter would be eight, divided by eight, so 3.14. So we're gonna add that to our other two sides that are four. So four plus four is eight plus three, that would be 11.14 centimeters. Alrighty, that's lesson 104.